go. All right. Well, hello, viewers out there on the, in the internet. This is Reverend Virgilio Malicio, and today it is my pleasure and my honor to bring this teaching to you, which my pastor, Gregory uh, V. Marilla, uh, has directed me to do so. So I thank uh, the pastor and Minister Lucy, the First Lady of the Church, and thanking you for giving me this, this honor. So today's teaching will be as the continuation that the pastor has been teaching on, and the title is Watch How Jesus Did It. Okay. Um, So again, I thank the uh, audience that out there in, uh, in the internet and on YouTube for uh, tuning in to see any Impossible Faith Ministry Center. Um, in the book of John, if you will please turn to John, the first chapter, and we're going to start with uh, verses 1 through 5. Amen. I want you to notice something here. In the book of John, as it starts in the first verse, it says, in the beginning was the word. And if you notice, there's a comma there. Now, I noticed another thing, too, that in the book of Genesis, when it, at the very beginning, in chapter 1 in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, it says, in the beginning, God, and then there's a comma. So when you think about it, in John it says, the word. In Genesis it says, God. That lets you know there's a little message there for anyone that's really thinking, because one thing that I like to do is to take my time I don't like reading the, God, the word fast like you would a newspaper. It just doesn't make any sense that you should do that. Because the way I see it, every word that God has in this book, okay, from Genesis to Revelation, every word is a commandment. And if you want your spirit man to grow, don't cheat yourself by reading it like you would a newspaper. Because remember, a newspaper, it's just dead words. But these words have life. They are spirit and truth. Okay? Now that's according to God's word. So what I always suggest is that when you read the book of well, I have the King James book, and uh, this particular Bible that I have is a teaching Bible. It's for students that want to learn, and it has a lot of information in it that you wouldn't find in a regular Bible. But nevertheless, it always comes to the same conclusion, and that is the message that God wants you to receive. So when you read... The eternal word, that's the, the title on the, the first five verses. But tonight's teaching, of course, is watch how Jesus did it. And it says here, in the beginning was the word, comma, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So you don't want to just read past that, okay? Read this. In the, like if you were eating a nice, juicy sirloin steak, you want to savor every morsel of it, okay? You don't want any of it to get away from you. I mean, when you watch a young kid eating an ice cream cone, if he doesn't want that ice cream cone to go so fast, what he'll do is he'll take a sweet time eating that ice cream cone, right? And when you was a kid, you did the same thing, all right? So you're doing this, that's the one thing you have to put that mindset that you're going to get every drop that the Lord has for you within his word. Because it's one thing that I have noticed and has been taught to me by not only my pastor, but I've heard it from many other pastors, that God, Jehovah, 
is a God that loves to hide things and he wants you to do the seeking. Okay? So, in the, in the verse, in the very first half of the verse, he'll have a message for you. And may even have a different message for you in the second half of that verse. Depends on how you meditate on this word, how you nourish that word, you know. Just be mindful that you want your spirit to be the one that's receiving and growing. Because in this world that we live in today, you know we're being bombarded daily. No matter what you turn on, whether it's your cell phone on Facebook or the television or the radio, the devil is working overtime to distract you. And he's doing a wonderful job with the youth, especially those that don't come to church, they don't go to Bible study, they're ignorant to the word. And the last thing we need is to be to lose ourselves because let's face it, we are in the end times. And you never know. It could be next year, ten years from now. No one even knows. Okay? When the Lord will return. When the church will be raptured up. Okay? And I'll tell you right now, I want to be in that number. I, I want to go up. I don't like the idea of going down. I mean, I, I've already, by mistake, burned myself a couple of times, you know, while in a barbecue or lighting a stove. And that hurts. So when I think that just that little itty-bitty burn hurt that much, and then he's telling me in Revelation that it's going to be eternal. Oh, no. There's one thing. I, even when I go to the dentist, I, I tell him, look, man, give me as much Novocaine as you can give me. I don't want to feel no kind of pain. I'm allergic to pain. Okay? <laughs> I'm allergic to pain. I can't stand it. That's not my porte. You know? that's, not, that's, that's not me. So as we, I look at this. And I just like to savor it in a minute. In the beginning was the word. Then I go over to Genesis. If you do me a favor, please turn into Genesis, the, chap the first chapter, and let us go to the first verse. And let's compare Genesis with the book of John. Okay? And let's see what we find here. When you get there, please say amen. All right. This is the history of creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, I was listening, if I'm not mistaken, um, I, was, I think it was TVN or one of those. I, see, I listened to so many of them besides my pastor because I'm always hungry for the word. Okay? And... God has a way of compressing time. Mankind, most of men that don't really study, come to, come to Bible study or study the word or, or get into the book, don't really understand how God can create a world that to him is just a set time, but to mankind it's nine billion years that it took God to create the world. Think about that. That's man's m measuring, his ruler. But then again, God is a God that stands outside of time. Amen. All right? He made time for us because we're the ones that need it. We're the ones that need the seven days a week, the 30 some odd days a, a, of a month, and the 12 months of the year, and so forth and so on. So he doesn't need that. But he can compress time to the point where he can make the earth in just speaking a word. And that's what he did. Okay, because if you go to continue in the book of Genesis and go to verse 2, the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering 
over the face of the waters. Now listen to this. This is verse number three. Then God said. Now this is the first time that God speaks as far as the, the recording of his word is concerned. Okay? This is the first time that he speaks. And he said, let there be light. And there was light. Think about that. What he did to him in an instant, in just verbalizing it, man has registered it as nine billion years. Is that an awesome God that we serve or what? Now, if you also look, Jesus did the very same thing, except that he did it in a different manner. He compressed time. For example, if you go into the book of John and go to chapter 2, when you get this, say amen, please. Uh, uh, no, John chapter, yeah, John chapter 2. Amen. Now in John chapter 2, this is where Jesus goes to the wedding at Cana. In, let's see here. Okay, so he goes to the, to the, to the wedding and his mother says to him, they've run out of wine. And of course, Jesus knew that it, his ministry wasn't supposed to start yet, and he, he replied to her, woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour's not yet come. But remember, Jesus is in human form, and he's our example of how we should be. So he honored his mother. He was obedient to her. Because remember, she then turned around (laughs) and just told the servants, whatever he tells you to do, do. And Jesus told them to fill up those vats of water. And they filled them to the brim. Only Now remember, this is just Jesus and the servants. The servants are the only ones that are seeing this. The rest of the, the people, they're just happy, this and the other, going around about their, you know, having fun. And Jesus turns the water into wine in an instant. Now, the, the, the master of the feast tasted the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from. But the servants who had drawn the water knew. The master of the feast, this is verse 9 I'm at. Forgive me for not letting you know where I'm at. Reading on verse 9. Okay. But the servants who had drawn the water knew. The master of the feast called the bridegroom. In verse 10 he says, and he said to him, Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine, And when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior, you have kept the good wine until now. Now think about this a moment. The same way God spoke the word and the earth was made and everything else in creation was created. Here Jesus does almost the same thing except that here he takes water and turns it into a 50-year-old wine. The wine that they tasted was as good, if not better, than a 50-year-old wine. And he did it in an instant. This is the God we serve, folks. Okay? This is, this is Jesus. This is the word that went forth and did not come back void. Okay? 
when God Jehovah commanded him to go out, he did. Obedience is something that is just part of protocol. Okay? So he compressed time. Jesus did the same thing in the wedding of Canaan. Okay, I got that. Now, when we're talking about watch how Jesus did it, the first question comes to mind is, who is Jesus? So, let's go back to John, the first chapter, and let's continue, and let's go to verse 2. Please let me know when you're there. John, chapter 1, verse 2. Okay. Well, let me just read first verse 1 and go we go right into verse 2, okay? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Verse 2. He was in the beginning with God. With God. That lets you know that there the, the two are one. If you can't see that then you would have to go a little further. In verse 3, all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him, verse 4, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Now, In verse 5, if you can see here, and the light shines and the darkness, in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. What What we're relating to here is the sinful world cannot understand the glory, the grace of Jesus. Because he is, him and God are one. I know that the word Trinity is not written in the Bible, but there is another word that is equal to that in meaning and in weight, and that is triune. Triune means Trinity. I'm not going to tell you where that's at, because I'd rather you go ahead and do a little seeking, okay, a little digging, because that's all the part about getting closer to knowing who Jesus is. And in order for you to truly know who Jesus is, you must first seek the Holy Spirit. He is the one that will show you who Jesus is. He's the one that will both guide and lead you to knowing the knowledge of Jesus, the vision of who he is. And remember, he may be seated at the right hand of the Father, but he is God and he's here dwelling within you. That's how powerful he is. A lot of people can't wrap their mind around that. You know, they, they, they got, oh, how could he be there and here too? Hello, he's God. <laughs> it's nothing he cannot do. Okay, so you can't go around using your puny little mind and try to compare it to that of God Jehovah, that of Jesus, or that of the Holy Spirit. There are three Godheads. So you have three Godheads in one accord, one mind, one God. Okay? So as we go on here, I have little notes that I have written out for me so that I can, uh, so I won't lose myself, you know. (laughs) I I don't want to get lost here. Because this is a subject that needs delicate care. You must treat it as if it was a newborn babe, you know. So where I put down, remember, we're not talking about a regular human. We're talking about Jesus. We cannot read the word of God like we would read other books. I covered that part. I kind of jumped ahead I shouldn't have done that. That's my mistake. God likes to hide messages. Indeed, he does. 
So, like I was saying about eating that steak smothered in onions and mushrooms, you know, and just the way you like it, and every little bit that you eat, every time you take one bite, you're trying to make it last as long as, especially if it's well seasoned. And you're looking at a well-seasoned book. This is not just any book, okay? This is the word of God. And every word, like I said, has messages within messages. And every time you come back, it may have a different message for you. It all depends on what God sees that, you, that you're in need of. Because he, every, remember, you're on the part of stone there where he's turning you and he's molding you every step of the way. Every day it's a new lesson. Every day it's like if you can imagine a diamond cutter and he has this diamond in front of him and he has to make it perfect. And he's standing there with that mallet and that little special chisel that he has and he's just tap, tap, and everything that he chips away brings the diamond even more so, more brilliant. So think about yourself as all of your imperfections are being chopped away. And the diamond in the rough that you are is coming to light. The longer you live, the more brilliant you become the more carrots, as we would say, <laughs> grow within you. And you become that polished, perfect perfection that he had in mind for you from the beginning. Amen. It's like the pastor was saying, well, he's been saying it for the last two or three weeks, where he shows you how the beginning when you were born and the end when you go before Jesus, okay? But everything before that, okay, is holy. It's holy. It's precious. It's pure. Not, you, you're very, you may bring the memory as a baby, but as you get older, you forget all of that. Now here, between birth and death, you start to pick up all of the other impurities that stick to you. And that's where the diamond cutter comes in. The Holy Spirit will be the one that's both guiding you, leading you, bringing you closer to Jesus, provided that you are hungry enough. Because if you feel full, you're not going to want to look. Okay? You can't force a person that's full to eat. They just don't have it. They, have no, they, don't, they, don't, they don't find the room for it. So you can't force them to eat something that, no matter how good it looks, they're not going to be able to eat it. But if they're hungry, even a crumb from the master's table will be welcomed. Okay? Every ounce of it will be welcomed. And this is what we do with the word of God. We must take every single word and don't just fly through it. Meditate on it. Allow the Holy Spirit to bring that light that you're seeking so that your spirit man will receive it and become the greater part of you. Amen. Remember, your spirit man is fighting against two others. Okay? He has to control those two. And the worst of the two is your flesh. Amen. It's funny how the English language, uh, when you speak about yourself and using the grammar that you have been taught from grammar school through in, all the way through junior high and high school, they've always taught you that when you relate to yourself, you have three ways of relating to yourself. You say that it's me, myself, and I. Isn't that three? In one? So you think, me is the body that you see, that you can touch, you can feel, you can smell. <laughs> okay? All the five senses will show you who me is. 
So therefore, you're more apt to believe me. Because as you, as you can see me. Now, myself, you can only hear because of my expression. So it's my mindset, my emotions, my ideas, okay? The way I'm being led and how I speak. So that's myself. Now, I, that's the one that you don't see. That's the one that when you look into the eyes, they say that the eyes are the windows of the, of the soul. Very true. Because, see, you are not here. You're not here. You're in here looking out these two windows. Amen. All right? No one can see I except God himself. And Jesus, who resides with you, knows who I am. Listen to what I just said. I am. In the beginning, well, not in the beginning, but in Genesis, if you look into Genesis, it'll show you when God decided to create man. What did he say? Let us make man in our likeness, and image. Us. Who was he speaking to when he said us? The other two parts of the Blessed Trinity. Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Right? Now, when you think about that, just kind of meditate. Allow it to just, like you're seasoning that meat ready to, for the barbecue. You don't want to just season it two minutes before. You want to season it at least a day before so that it it really drinks in all of your ingredients. So when you think about God, Jehovah, with his awesome love for us, he made us above everything else in the universe. There's nothing out there like us. So when I said, I am, I'm not taking the glory from God. I'm not trying to be, say, oh, well, I'm God. No, no. But my spirit man is part of him. Because when he breathed his breath into Adam, he breathed part of his spirit into him, which is what caused Adam to come to life. Now, here's another time where he has taken time and compressed it. Because imagine if you could take the scholars of today, the big scientists, the big minds of today, and teleport them back to that time, say an hour after God had made Adam. Adam was a full-grown man. He wasn't a baby. A full-grown man. I, I would just guess to say he was in his 20s. Okay? If these scientists were to be go to were able to go back there and examine him, take his blood, his DNA, this, you, know, you know how they do. They try to break it down scientifically in, so in order for it to make sense to them. But you don't try to make sense of what God's power is. It just is. Accept it. Okay? So when they see Adam, they will be baffled. How could he be just an hour old? He's a full-grown man. Same thing they're doing with planet Earth. Oh, it's so many thousands and trillions and this and the other. No. God is God. He could take time and compress it into an instant. The same way Jesus turned water into wine in an instant. And that wine and you taste it is 50 years old kind of wine. It tastes that good. It's the nectar of the gods, as they say. <laughs> okay? You know? So this is why I say, when you read God's word, don't cheat yourself. It's a big mistake. Take your time. Look at every word. If you need to, you know what? If you could find it, see if you could find these two books. A book that will translate Hebrew into English and another book that will translate Greek into English and use those two books when you're reading your Bible. 
I guarantee you, you will find things that you never thought were possible. There are words in here that have so much meaning. So, because see, in the Hebrew language, words are very, very powerful. This is why they, they're very choicy as to when they speak to you. Because every word that they utter, they know the power of the spoken word. Okay? A lot of us take it for granted. We take the power of the spoken word, oh, just the word. Remember the old saying when you was a kid? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never harm me. Oh, yeah? <laughs> really? Keep playing that little game. And you'll be, you're not going to be right. But, <laughs> I mean, let's face it. How far can you get on your own? You can't. You need him every single step that you take, every breath that you breathe in is because he gave it to you. Every time your heart beats, it's because he's in charge of that. When your blood runs through your veins, you're not in control. Have you noticed that? Can you control your vein, the, the blood running through your veins? Can you control any part of your body besides your tongue? <laughs> And even that you have a hard time with, okay? But God has set it into motion so perfectly that there isn't a timepiece in the world that could compare itself to the human body, how perfectly made it is. Why? Because of the agape love that he has for us. That love is so powerful that words cannot describe it. There are no strings attached. Everything that he gives you is freely given to you from his heart. Because he loves you. He made you so perfect. It's only through this world, this outside world that we don't belong to. We're just journeying through it. Okay? We are, as the pastor has been teaching us for the longest, we are spirit beings having a human experience. This is not our world, not yet. Or it will be after everything is said and done and the devil is put away for good, all right? Then we will all come back to this earth and it will be already renewed like the Garden of Eden was in the beginning. We will go right back to the beginning. But this time, the earth will be populated. It won't just be Adam and Eve, all right? I mean, Adam and Eve will be there too. Moses and, I mean, you name everybody, they're going to be there. And you'll be able to interact with them. All your questions that you have, you could ask them. And then you go out, forget about it. I mean, the information is crazy. The information you're going to receive would just, if you were to have even that much of it now, they would call you crazy. You end up in a nut house somewhere. You, you, your mind couldn't withstand it. That kind of reminds me of this movie they got out named Lucy. <laughs> okay, they made a scientific something or other there that caused her brain to mature to the point where she ended up using 100% of her brain. I mean, this girl went crazy. All right? Mind over matter. She could change the color of her hair, the texture of her hair, her body. She could change everything. And when I saw the coming attraction, I started thinking, wow. Imagine when we come back and we're able to just think it and have it. Think about this a moment. I'm a Star Trek fan from way back. Being able to go from Earth to any planet in the universe just because you can think it. And you can be there in a thought. In the same little instant in which God spoke the word, and created everything, and mankind can look at it and say, oh, that's trillions and billions and, and years. It was all compressed into an instant. 
Brothers and sisters, I'm going to have to cut it short, but in closing, I want to thank my pastor, Gregory Marilla, for giving me this honor to be here and to bring the word to you. I'm looking forward to, in the future, to be able to do the same thing again, to share what my pastor's anointing has given me. I dip my bucket into his well every chance I get. Okay, that's why my my notes. <laughs> I don't know how many books I have. I'm gonna have to do like get me a little crate and start putting them in order. Looking at the dates and put them in order. Cause right now they just here, there, and everywhere in the house. You know, I gotta get them in order, really. But there's so much information in there, and not only from my pastor, but remember, my pastor also has an upline. His upline when he'll be here. Next week, next Tuesday, pass the word. Dr. Andrew Lloyd will be here again. That man is full of knowledge, full of wisdom. All right? Remember this. The pastor's been saying this for many a times. Never trust a pastor that doesn't have a pastor. You got to be accountable to somebody. You must have an upline. Just like he has an upline, his upline has an upline. All right? Dr. Andrew Lloyd, Apostle Andrew Lloyd, has Dr. Leroy Thompson. Okay? And Dr. Leroy Thompson, I believe, has, was Kenneth Hagen at the time, but he went on with the Lord, so now he has who? Kenneth Copeland, is it? Right, right. So we all are accountable to someone. And you'll see that in the, in the Blessed Trinity also. The Holy Spirit doesn't say anything unless he hears it from the Father. Same thing with Jesus. It's all part of protocol. Well, listen, I've taken up enough of your time. I hope that this message has been a blessing to you, that your spirit man has been filled, and that you'll be able to go home, meditate on what you heard, and try to put it into practice, you know, Believe me, it will nourish you. It will fill you to the full. Remember, he is a God of abundance, and that's what you need, abundance in wisdom. Okay? So with that, let me just, uh, Pastor, do you have something that you want to say? No? Okay, so let me close it. And to the viewers out there, thank you for uh, Tuning in to see an impossible faith ministry where we solemnly believe that we are blessed, highly favored, and deeply loved. Goodbye, folks.